You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good evening from Xfinity Center, Maryland, 84-53 over Florida A&M. It wasn't that close. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's James Gist. As usual, talking to our experts. You mentioned one thing that really jumped out at you, which is even though Florida A&M had over 20 turnovers, Maryland only had nine assists. What does that tell you about a basketball game? Um, it just told me that that the ball wasn't really moving as much as it needed to be. Maryland was playing very aggressive, so they caused FAMU to turn the ball over a little bit. But getting out on the break, you know, you want to get easy shots, easy baskets, and that comes from sharing the ball. And seeing that they had a low percentage, I guess, in the assist column, it showed that they weren't really passing the ball and sharing it as much. That could have been where the difficulty was coming from in some of the offense they were running. It, it did. Maryland played everybody again tonight by the time the game was over. But they really rotated nine to ten guys when you play a game like this and you play quite a few of them in your time in college park and probably in europe what happens to as a team that, that gets to be a little disjointed um i mean wayne this is how it goes you know you got a lot of guys on your team most teams are built at 12 or 15 guys as the season goes on you start to learn what is your more safe rotations you know and it comes down to where everybody just can't play I think right now they're taking these first few games to kind of get an established role for everybody on the team. And, and as the games come up, they'll start to see less and less rotation. I, I think you're right. I, I, mean, I counted nine guys, your starters plus Jordan Geronimo, uh, Rodney Rice, Jay Young at point guard that I don't know a whole lot about. And, and there's one or two more that probably fit in. Here comes Sean Mosley jumping in. <laughs> Are nine guys too many guys to play in a regular rotation? I don't think nine guys is too many. Um, and it'll get down to round seven or eight, but you'll have your ninth and ten one just in case anybody gets in foul trouble or you have any injuries during the game where you have to depend on another player. Uh, but for the most part, you really go seven to eight deep, you know, on the bench. All right, so let's take a moment to review the guy who's right now the poster child of Maryland basketball. What did you think of Derek Queen tonight? One thing that's really uh, standing out to me about Derrick Queen, every game that I'm starting to see him, I'm starting to see a little bit more every single game for his ability and what he can do and what he brings to this Maryland team. When he passes the ball great, you know, as a big, it's hard to find big men that can have a good touch and, and able to deliver that ball. It's one thing to see it, but it's another thing to deliver and make sure it gets there. And Queen, he really is able to pass on both ends, right and left. You know, he catches some outlet passes off of rebounds and makes some full court passes. Maryland's offense runs a lot smoother when he's on the floor. That's something that really stands out to me. Uh, Juju, when Derek was off the floor, seemed to actually assert himself. I think he had a plus 37 or 38 to plus minus. He seemed pretty effective, but they certainly don't seem to play the same position at this point. They're two definitely, two totally different type bigs. Uh, one thing Julian did stand out today, 5-5 from the free throw line. He, well, he rebounded well. Finishing the paint, 21 points for him was really big. Big showing out um, third game of the season. So looking forward to seeing Julian and, and Derek Queen dominate, you know, the Big Ten this year with their presence and their size and their ability to rebound, you know. That, that's something that's going to put a lot of pressure on teams this year. All right, we'll talk about a couple other stars, including Rodney Rice, and what to expect as Marquette comes into Xfinity Center on Friday after this word from the big dog himself. And we have an announcement to make. Viner Fourgates, longtime sponsor, the hometown sponsor of all of these post game shows, is in the process of rebranding as Viner X. We're going to show you a preview ad on the new Viner X as it takes over for Viner Fourgates. We'll be back in a moment. Maryland, all over Florida, AM. So, Turp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jacklitch Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1. But as you know, Coach, it's not the last win, it's the next win that's so important. And that's why we continue to hustle, continue to work so hard for all of our clients to earn that name, the Big Dogs from the small firm. Just like you do. You get your guys hustling all the time. That's why we love you, Rick. And most of all, go, go Terps! Terps. Viner X is the new face of Viner Forgates. Tech support fuels your business growth. Making your company work is our number one priority. Viner X 
Networks is here to make your company work. Call us at 877-797-8776 or send us an email, servicedesk at vinerx.com. Back on the floor at Xfinity Center, James, in your coaching eye, you brought up Rodney Rice's effectiveness and how he can balance uh, Jacoby Gillespie with the high low and the pick and roll. What do you see for those guys? Uh, I mean, you see that they're dominant guards. When they come off, they're looking to get their shot off. You know, they can make passes, but they're really aggressive and looking for their shots. And, and Gillespie and, and Rice both have been shooting the ball well since the season has started. And so when I see that and I see the dominant presence that we have in the paint with Reese and we have with Queen, I'm thinking why not you have Reese on the baseline and you bring Gillespie or Rice in for a top pick and roll with Queen, you know, because you have to hedge as a defense. You bring that out. Now you have Queen in the middle of the paint, in the middle of the floor, where you can make plays to your shooters. If you got the opposite guard in the corner, if nobody helps, you have him for the finish in the middle of the paint. And if somebody steps up, you have Reese on the baseline for the jump off where he can really finish. I think that will bring a lot uh, a lot more fluidity to the offense. But I mean, it's times, you know, it's, it's early in the season. We're going to see how the team builds up. And a, a good build up to having number 15, Marquette, come in. Marquette's ambitious in this schedule. And Maryland on Friday. Purdue visits Marquette, I think, Monday or Tuesday. So they're looking for some name brand basketball to get their season started. Um, you got a first Big East, I almost said Big East ACC, not anymore. <laughs> Big East Big Ten look. Uh, the Big Ten doesn't have that many highly rated teams. We're looking at the ACC at the Big 12 or the Big East. What do you make of Big East basketball as a different style of ball than what the Big Ten is? I mean, Big Ten methodically and traditionally has always been one of those half-court bruising type conferences. The Big East, you know, they like to get up and down. They got um, high-level scoring, high-level teams in that, in that conference. So it'll be a chance for Maryland to kind of see where they line up after getting these first three games in to kind of warm themselves up, get their, get their you know, the camaraderie high in the locker room. It'll be good to see them test against a team like Marquette. Yeah. I still look at Maryland as a sleek running team, not really a Big Ten bulky team. And I think playing Marquette's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, over the next couple of weeks, you have Marquette. You have Villanova, you have Syracuse, you've got Ohio State. you got some opportunities to play some big names. Hopefully that goes well. Of course, Bruce and Mason away from the camera tonight. And I think we'll just wrap it up by saying catch us on Friday after the Marquette game. James will be back. I'll be back. And thanks for watching the Big Dog Postgame Show. Maryland 84, the Rattles 53.